friends, Rev. Janet Jones from High Country United Church up in Camilla, Ontario in Canada, here with you in my sprayer room on this day. <laughs> I sometimes lose track of what day it is. So this day, there was somebody who posted on uh, Facebook, uh, it's time for Shouty Thursday, and they're like, oh wait, it's Wednesday. Okay, prepare for tomorrow. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to our Picture the Bible series. And um, so starting uh, this week, we are just doing a video reflection on Wednesdays. Um, and on Mondays and Fridays, we're doing just a prayer to kind of mark the beginning and the end of a work week. So just to kind of give a little more time to do what we need to do this summer. So uh, this week's uh, picture of the Bible reflection is on the temptation of Jesus. So uh, you can read it in Luke 4 verses 1 to 13. And so let me read it with you. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry days without food. Ooh. Anyway, <clears throat> I digress. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor for it has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, this will all be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. <laughs> Jesus answered, it says, do not put your Lord, your God, to the test. When the devil had finished all his tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Temptation. What are you tempted by? I think there are material things we can say we're tempted by. Oh, I really want that nice looking car. It's just so pretty. A uh, nice house. I want chocolate. So much chocolate. Oh my goodness. Um, tempted by all these things in life. But then there are other temptations. And these are the ones I want to focus on today because the... Uh, the material temptations are kind of a little easier to say yes or no to, but there are temptations of our souls. Some people might feel tempted to say something if they see something, and it's like uh, if they see an accident, well, that guy's an idiot. There's a temptation, an inner need to say things, and yet we can resist the temptation to say and react and be something else. There can be a temptation to judge people in certain situations. Like, that person works. Why are they at the food bank? My goodness, they have money. We don't know everyone's circumstances. So there's a temptation to judge. Temptation to hate, perhaps because of something your family has experienced, you have experienced, a friend has experienced. Like, I hate going to that store. They're horrible people. I don't like that culture. They smell funny. They do things that's not like us. These things, the temptations that we might not even see as temptations. Have you ever thought about that? There are times when I might be out and about and I see something and I'm, I actually do this. I like, oh my God, did you see that? That's horrible. Oh my gosh, that person needs to, whatever. 
and I'll go, whoa, God forgive me, help me grow. That's what I do now because it's like all these things that go on. It's like, wait a second. That's not who you call me to be. You do not call me to be judge. You do not call me to be jury. You do not call me to be anything but love in this world. And so that my heart turns there is simply because the temptation kind of has set so well that it's norm. And so I ask people that when they hear me say something that is kind of against love, is kind of against uh, justice and equity, is kind of against another, to call me on it. Evelyn will often go, Mom, did you really say that? That's how she does it. And then it's like, oh, I did, didn't I? Oh, my goodness. Okay. And then I ask God to forgive me and help my heart. Because the fact that I can say something and react so unlike Jesus, tells me there's growth that still needs to happen. We are perfectly imperfect people. Like, we are. And everyone has grown up with something. Something different. There's, I mean, things we learn in school that is not taught by teachers, but on the playground, there are things, right? And so we need to kind of look at those things. Like, we are called to be love. And to think that Jesus was tempted by this devil and he himself had to kind of talk through it. It's not just simple like, oh, where? It was a, I, I hear what you're saying and I recognize my reaction and this is why I'm not doing it. Imagine we had that. Imagine if I walked up to my fridge when I'm having a stress eating moment and I look at my chocolate and go, Oh, honey, this is not the time for me to have chocolate. I thank you that you are tempting me, but I shall resist. For my body is God's temple. I might have to put that on my fridge. <laughs> and my cupboard and my storage room. <laughs> but imagine if we had those kind of words, not just actions, but these like very specific words we spoke. Would it change? us? Would it help us move from temptation to something more? I wonder what you're being tempted by. As I hear the screaming of dogs outside in this very moment, I'm tempted <laughs> to find a new space to record. But the reality is the world continues to evolve and I need to recognize that that the world is alive and constantly going and me having a moment, small blip on the radar. But me acknowledging my moment, being humble, asking for grace and kindness and growth can become a much bigger and better blip on the radar of my own journey. So what are you tempted by? What's tempting you and have you ever thought about all those things that just are second nature that might be seen as kind of a temptation from i'm gonna say evil hmm. not an easy thing to think about i want to say it sounds easy from jesus point you had the devil there. It was clear. It was temptation. We have a lot of things around us that are disguised. Evil disguised as good. <laughs> and then we have our own mind and psychology. We have our own context and upbringing. We have our own circumstances and experiences. But I think... You know, God took his time 40 days in the desert without food. Holy moly macaroni. I think he took that time to connect with God. I think he took it to become stronger in his faith, stronger in himself and what was to come. So if you're like you, if you're anything like me, you're gonna go and put a little note on your fridge. I just 
a whiteboard there and I think I will not be tempted this body as God's temple I'm gonna put that there and see if it makes a difference I think I need it more so at the grocery store than I do my refrigerator <laughs> friends um you know i would love to hear uh if you're willing to share in the comments or even in a personal message to me kind of what things you struggle with what things you're tempted with or by because um you know if there are a bunch of us experiencing the same thing maybe it's something we can talk about together anyway that's nice and light for today isn't it <laughs> Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the words of scripture that help us to learn, to grow, to give us confidence and reassurance that we are not alone, that we are loved, that there is grace and forgiveness, but there's also accountability. So God, help us to be tempted by your love the positive things in life and not by the negative. I ask you to be in all our minds as we wrap our heads around um, the residential school discovery in Kamloops, to wrap our minds around all of the history of Indigenous peoples that we are learning through the Truth and Reconciliation and actually through some other things. The reality that many of us weren't taught um, these things in school and so learning them now is um, challenging help us take on that challenge help us to not be tempted by just reading a headline and moving on but reading a full story not only of the indigenous people but of all peoples help us to be oh god your love in this world help us to help find our, our journey of healing for ourselves and for our communities. And God of all, help us to steer clear from the devil, to find you fighting for us in all that we experience in life. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so that's our picture of the Bible series for this week, this picture here. And I'm just wondering, would you have put a different picture in? What picture would you have drawn? Anyway, until I see you uh, Sunday morning, I hope, or sometime Sunday because you're allowed to sleep in right now, or, or, or Sunday night prayers at 7.50. This is Rev Jan as always. Hoping you have a smile on your face and a dance in your step. Saying, friends, God is with you. Hope you have a great rest of the week.